Uh, thanks a lot for inviting me to give a talk on inter antenna interference in MIMO wireless. I'm Professor Rakesh Singh Satrimium. I'm affiliated to the Department of Electronics and Electrical Engineering at Guwahati. So just before the start of the talk, I want to acknowledge my students. Uh, this is Mr. Mohit Misra. He is in the final stage of his PhD thesis. This is Dr. Sumantra Saudri. He recently defended his PhD thesis. Mm -hmm. And this is Dr. Aniban Bowl. He defended his PhD and he'll be joining at INRS EMT Montreal as a postdoctoral fellow. This is Dr. Bridges Kumaini. He's an assistant professor at IT Roper. So these four students, they have contributed significantly in my talk. So, okay, this is the outline of the talk. So first I will discuss about why we want to go for MIMO wireless. What is the use of MIMO wireless? Why do you want to go for MIMO wireless? There are basically two types of gain from MIMO wireless. One is called red gain, another is called diversity gain. So red gain is called, also called as multiplexing gain. So both these gain are possible from the MIMO wireless. But then there's a trade-off between these two, diversity multiplexing trade-off, famous diversity multiplexing trade-off. Then we'll go to the actual topic of the talk, which is called inter-antenna interference in MIMO wireless. I, I will actually give you perspective both from wireless and antenna perspectives. And we'll try to overcome, eradicate, and minimize this inter-antenna interference, both from wireless and antenna perspective. Then I will conclude the talk. So let us go back to the background of the wireless communication. So in 1990s, we used to have wired phone, landline phones. That means whenever we want to make a phone call or receive phone call, we have to go to the landline phones if we are at home or office. Or if you are outside or home or office, then we have to go to the telephone booth and make a phone call. So beyond this point, we are not accessible. But somewhere in 1990s, late 1990s and 2000, mobile phones come into existence. And with the advent of mobile phones, we can be connected to anywhere, almost everywhere. So this is all mobile phones. Here you can see some protruded structure here. These are actually antennas. So all mobile phones usually have this kind of or to that structure as antenna, but now this new mobile phones do not have this kind of uh, or to that structure as an antenna. Uh, but somewhere in uh, early 2010s, we have smartphone and with the smartphone, we can do multi uh, million, uh, we, we can do many things with the mobile phones. One is you can serve internet, you can make video call, you can play games and so on. So nowadays, some people are thinking that mobile phone is also going to replace computer system in the future, in the near future. So with the smartphone, we can have ubiquitous communication anywhere, almost everywhere. We are accessible at any part of the world whenever there is a network coverage of the mobile phones. So by the way, wireless communication means you transmit and receive signals, including messages without any wires such as in mobile phones. So this diagram here shows base station, three base station communicating with the mobile phones here. Usually all the base station will cover one area which are shown by circles here. So when we move from one base station to another base station, there will be handoff, mobile handoff. So you, you can use the network of the next mobile base station. So here in this talk, I will actually mean message means message bit. Basically all the messages or information we are sending audio, video and text can be converted into bits using analog to digital converters. So all the messages here means it messes with zeros and one in this talk. So this is a famous quotation, any wireless communication cannot happen without antennas. So antennas are everywhere, almost everywhere. So in mobile phones, uh, mobile communication, we have this mobile base station antennas here. And this is the all TV antennas we usually see in our childhood. And uh, this is satellite based antenna, parabola reflector antenna. This is a full duplex wireless communication antennas we have fabricated in our lab. And uh, this is another antenna DRA array. So we have dialectic blocks here, six dialectic blocks. We actually designed this antenna array for uh, avoiding the collision in the vehicles. So, so for different kinds of antennas, we have uh, applications, we have to have different kinds of antenna, but any kind of wireless communication cannot happen without antennas. Okay, so coming back to the traditional wireless communication CISO system. 
CISO system means basically this is channel. Channel is the medium through which you send the signals. So now looking at this channel, it has an input from this transmitting antenna, single antenna here. Looking at this channel, this is outputting signal to this receiving antenna here. So channel basically is having input from one antenna, which is transmitting antenna of the transmitter, and channel is having output to the receiving antenna of the receiver. So with respect to this channel, it's single input, single output. So traditional wireless communication has single antenna at the transmitter, single antenna at the receiver, and it is called single input, single output. What is MIMO? MIMO basically means looking at this channel here, you see that transmitter here is having NT number of antennas, antenna one, antenna two, up to antenna NT. And this receiver is having NR number of antennas, antenna one, antenna two, up to antenna NR. So now looking at this channel perspective, it sees an input from NT antennas from the transmitting the transmitter and it outputs uh, NR signals to the NR antennas of the receiver. So this is called multiple input, multiple output, or in short from people call it MIMO wireless system. So it's an anti, anti cross NR MIMO wireless communication system. So look at the present day mobile communications. We have 3G, 4G smartphones. You can do so many things. You can make, uh, besides voice call, you can make video call, you can watch movie, you can listen to song, you can do video conferencing and list goes on. So somewhere in 2009, 2010, this was our classroom discussion in one of my electives, one device for many applications. So now somewhere in 2020, smartphones are actually fulfilling that discussion we have done in the class few years back. So now the question is, what do we want in all of this? For example, you must have seen this, it's loading, it's loading. So it's very slow. Loading takes a lot of time, it's very frustrating. So we don't want this to happen. That means in other words, we want to have a higher data rate or faster internet speed or higher data rate. So higher data rate is what we want for any wireless communication system. Another thing is that after we download the movie, we want to watch it. There's no clarity, a lot of errors. So another thing is that we want to have less error in the data transmission. So in all this uh, wireless communication, what we want is higher data rate and less error in data transmission. So any kind of wireless communication system, these are all wireless communication system we have shown here. There are two performance metrics. One is called capacity and another is called productive error. So pro capacity means maximum data rate you can transfer over the channel with minimum productive error. So this is this gives me that higher data rate. So if you have higher capacity, you can have higher data rate. Another is the productive error, which will actually have less error in the data transmission, will have better voice or video clarity. So these are the two main criteria for performance metrics for any wireless communication system. And MIMO communications have higher channel capacity and less productive error. Both the aims are achieved by MIMO wireless communication without increasing the bandwidth and power in transmission. So we fix the power, but we fix the bandwidth, but we have higher channel capacity and less productive error. So let's try to understand what are these two kinds of gain you have from MIMO system over CISO system. First thing is called Red gain and it is called diversity gain. So red gain will increase the data transmission rate and uh, diversity gain will minimize the error in data transmission. So basically we'll consider a three by three MIMO system. Three by three MIMO system means we have three antennas at, as a trans, at the transmitter and three antennas at the receiver. So for three by three MIMO system, we'll try to understand what is this red gain and diversity gain. So let's say I want to transmit 0, 0, 001 bits. For the three by three MIMO system, I can transmit one from first antenna, two from second antenna, uh, one from first antenna, zero from second antenna, and zero from third antenna. So I can have parallel transmission. At one particular instant of time, I can send all the three bits at a time. But let's say if you have a CISO system, if I want to transmit zero, zero, one, I have to transmit one first, then I have to transmit zero, then I have to transmit zero. I need three time instant to transmit three bits. So in terms of speed, I have a three times speed improvement in terms of MIMO wireless communication when we consider three by three MIMO system. This is called red gain. Another thing is called diversity. Uh, so just before that, let us try to understand what is the advantage of this red gain. So now, as you know that for CISO system, you have one antenna. So all the power which is incoming to the antenna is given to one single antenna. But if you have a MIMO antenna, you have N antennas. If you consider number of transmitting antenna, antenna and number of receiving antennas are N, we just have N antennas. So every antenna should get some power. So how much power is allocated to every antenna? Is, is one of the antenna is, divide, uh, is decided by some strategy which is called power allocation strategy. So if you have a simple power 
allocation scheme where you give equal power to each antenna, you have to divide the total power into equal power by dividing with the number of transmitting antenna. For example, if you consider three by three MIMO system, then you have to have PT by three here, PT by three here, PT by three here. So this is called equal power allocation. So now why we are discussing about this is because for a MIMO system, the capacity for equal power allocation is given as n times that of the CSO system. Traditional where system which employs one antenna at the transmitter and one antenna at the receiver, MIMO system has n times of that capacity. That means speed has been increased n times. So we have a speed improvement of almost n times for equal power allocation for MIMO system when you have a channel which is called ID, ID MIMO channel without increasing the bandwidth and SNR. So usually if you have a traditional wireless communication system. If I want to increase the speed, I increase the bandwidth or I increase the SNR. But for the MIMO system, without increasing bandwidth and SNR, you can have capacity which is n times that of the CSO system. So it, what does that mean? We have 4G system actually has projected peak data rate of around 1 Gbps. 5G is 20 times of 4G system, 20 Gbps. 6G is 1,000 times of uh, 4G system, so it's 1,000 Gbps. So if you want to have a higher and higher data rate, MIMO system is the solution. Any other system cannot give such a high data rate. So MIMO systems are already employed in 4G system. 4G system employ around N antennas and 5G, they have provision for 100 antennas and 6G maybe around 1000 antennas. So MIMO system is the technology which will give us the required speed peak data rate we require for 4G, 5G and 6G systems. So that is one part of the MIMO system, which is called red gain. Another part of the MIMO system is called diversity gain. So what is the effect of this diversity gain? So look at this three by three MIMO system. If I want to send bit zero, in this case, what I will do is something different from previous one. I will send simply zero bits from mm -hmm. antenna one, also antenna two, also antenna three also. Mm -hmm. So if I send zero bits from antenna one, antenna two and antenna three, it can go to this antenna one, two, three of the receivers. So there are how many independent parts we can have? We can have nine independent parts. So what is the advantage of that? Let's say if any of the part is broken, it's down, link is down, we don't need to worry. We can decode the message properly at the receiver from the remaining parts. Let's say you consider a CISO system and you want to send zero bits and this link is down, then you are in outage. You cannot receive any message at the receiver side. So this is the advantage of diversity gain. So this will minimize the probability of error in the transmission or it will have higher accuracy. So let us briefly discuss what is bit error rate or probability of error rate. So basically there's a number of bits in error with total number of bits sent. Let's say we send just five bits, two bits are an error, then probability of error is 0 0.4. And there's another term called SNR. SNR is the ratio of the signal power divided by the noise power. Higher is the SNR, lower is the probability of error. So these are probability of error versus SNR curve. And what you can see is that for the CSO system, this is the curve you have here. For the MIMO system, it will have higher slope. Because of this higher slope, we'll have less probability of error. So let us try to understand it quickly. So let's say probability of error for the CSO system for the most widely used relay fading channel is one by SNR, approximately one by SNR. But let's say you consider probability of error for MIMO system, it is one by SNR to the power diversity gain. If diversity gain is two, three, four, and five, the slope of this curve is going to increase for the MIMO system with respect to the CISO system. So now what is the advantage of that? Let us take one particular example here. I actually fixed the SNR. SNR is called the 20 dB. So now it is crossing the uh, CISO system around probability of error of 0.5 into 10 to the power minus two. But for the MIMO system, this curve, MIMO system curve, it is crossing around 0.5 into 10 to the power minus five. For the same SNR or signal to noise ratio from this curve, what we can observe is because of this increased slope, I can have a very less probability of error here, 0.5 times 10 to the power minus five with respect to that of the CISO system, 0.5 10 to the power minus two. So with the same SNR, I can have a less probability of error, much, much lesser than that of the CISO system, traditional wireless communication system. Similarly, I can also observe it from different point of view, like fix the probability of error then I look at what is the SNR required for the CISO system. It's around 27. For the MIMO system, it is 17. So MIMO is an energy efficient wireless communication system. So people are actually projecting MIMO is also one of the possibilities for green communication. But then both this can, we cannot keep on increasing. There is a trade-off between these two. This is actually the famous 
diversity multiplication thread off, it says that diversity optimal is equal to nr minus r into nt minus r. So if we keep on increasing r, r is the red gain, then diversity gain is going to decrease. So there is a trade-off between these two. We cannot keep on increasing both of them simultaneously. So any kind of MIMO system should be designed taking into account this diversity multiplication trade-off. Okay, so this is one simple example. We have a five by five MIMO system here. In the five by five MIMO system, I can use three antennas for red gain and I can use two antennas for diversity gain. So we'll have uh, diversity gain of four and red gain of three. So now let us try to look at the input output system model for a simple CISO system. In the CISO system, if Y is the receipt signal and X is what we are transmitting, X is the channel model, then channel gain coefficient, then we can get y is equal to hx plus n. So channel is multiplicative and noise is additive. So y is equal to hx plus n. x is the symbol we are transmitting, y is what we are receiving. Similar model, you can do it for MIMO system. MIMO system, if you have two by two MIMO system, then the only thing is y will become a vector, x will become a matrix, and x will become a vector, and n will become a vector. So y will have y1, y2, that is a signal received by antenna one and antenna two. X is what we, signal you're transmitting from antenna one is X1, antenna two is X2. And N is the noise, N1 and N2. S is the channel matrix you have here. S11, S12, S21, S2. These are the channel gain paths you have here. So if you want to explore more about MIMO wireless, uh, we have a book here. This is my book on fundamentals of MIMO wireless communication published by Cambridge University Press, UK. And this is another book written with Dr. Bridges Kumbani uh, my more wireless communication over generalized fitting channel by CRC Press USA. So if we want to write the input output system model for MIMO system, NT by NR MIMO system, input output model is given by Y is equal to SX plus N. Y will become a vector now since we have NR antennas at the receiver, Y will become Y1, Y2 up to YNR, N will become N1, N2 up to NNR. Channel matrix will be NR by NT matrix here. X vector will become X1, X2 up to X and T because we have NT antenna set transmitter. So now let us define what is inter antenna X interference from wireless perspective. So now you look at the receipt signal back, uh, vector here, R will become R1, R2. R1 is basically S11, S1, S12, S2 plus N1. And R2 is S21, S1 plus S22, S2 plus N2. So what do we see here at the receiver? We are actually receiving mixture of symbols which has been sent from transmi uh, transmitting antenna one and two. So symbol one and symbol two. This is basically a headache for the receiver. So receiver has to detect all the message symbol which has been transmitted from the transmitter. This kind of inter antenna interference is not there for the CISO system where only one antenna was transmitting. So only one symbol will be received. Inter antenna interference. So what is the problem with this? So the receiver duty is to decode the message which has been sent from the transmitter. So what it does is call something called maximum likelihood decoding, where it tries to find the equivalent distance between the receipt signal vector with all the possible symbol vectors which could have been sent from the transmitter. So in this comparison, they have to do a lot of performance comparison here. So equivalent distance, that number of comparison can be given by this simple formula here. S is the symbol of hardware size, and T is the number of transmitting antenna. Or let's say if you consider a simple 4 to m modulation scheme, then m is 4. m is the number of symbols you can transmit from the transmitter. So now in that simple 4 to m uh, MIMO system employing 4 to m MIMO system uh, employing MIMO system employing 4 to m modulation scheme, how many metric calculations ML decoder has to do at the receiver to find out message which has been transmitted from the transmitter? Let's say if you have two by two MIMO system, this is uh, four square, so it's 16. And if it is four by four MIMO system, it is 64, five by five, then 1024. If you have 100 by 100 MIMO system, uh, sufficiently large MIMO system, then number of metric calculation is 10 lakhs 48,576. So this is really a big headache for the uh, receiver to decode all the messages at the receiver. It has to do a lot of metric calculations here. So this is the problem of inter antenna interference. But we have a cure for that. You can have a simple model, which is called spatial modulation based MIMO system. This is recently proposed somewhere in 2008. So here, basically based on the message bit, you have a SM mapper and based on the SM mapping, you actually connect to only one antenna of the transmitter. You have a RF switch here, RF switch will connect to only one antenna. Let's say RF switch is connected to antenna two, then only antenna two will be active. All other remaining antennas will be inactive. So in that case, 
Antenna 2 will be sending only symbols, so there's no inter-antenna interference at the receiver. So this SM or special modulation schemes actually completely remove the inter-antenna interference. So let us quickly look at the SM MIMO system. This is a mapping table. Let's say if I want to send three bits at a time, then there will be eight combinations here, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and so on. So now how do I do the decide which antenna I should connect with this RF switch here? So look at this first bit here. If it is all zeros, I connect it to the antenna one. If it is all ones, ones, then I connect it to the second antenna. So I have only two possibilities. This is two by two my own system. Either I connect to antenna one or antenna two, depending on whether I'm getting first bit as zero or one. Then remaining two bits, I can use port coin modulation system and find which symbol to be transmitted. So let's take one simple example. Zero, one, one is what we want to transmit. Then zero is the first bit. So I will connect RF switch to the first antenna. And one one is minus one plus j, so I will send symbol minus one plus j from antenna one. So antenna one and two at the receiver will receive the symbol minus one plus j. So the duty of this receiver is twofold. First, it will try to see which antenna was used for transmission from the transmitting at antenna, whether it's antenna one or two. So that will give me antenna in this estimation. If I know that it is coming from antenna one, then I will decode the message as zero bit. And I try to decode the message bit minus one plus j is what I'm observing, then I can uh, message which has been transmitted is one one, so zero one one. So it's a two step process at the receiver side. So if you want to explore more about special modulation and its advanced version, we have a recent book on advanced special modulation system published by Springer Nature Singapore. This written with my co-author, Dr. Anivan Bohr. Okay, so let us come back to the antenna perspective. This is the most important part and uh, this would be what people are eagerly waiting for. Okay, so let's say we have a red gain MIMO system. It's a three by three MIMO system. I want to send one, zero, and zero from antenna one, antenna two, and antenna three. So if these antennas are having radiation patterns like this, and if we keep this antenna one, two, three sufficiently far apart, then there won't be any kind of interaction. So, and again, this antenna receiving antenna is having radiation pattern like this. There's no interaction. As long as antenna one, two, and three are kept sufficiently far apart. So we can have that red gain of the MIMO system. But let's say antenna usually have side lobes. If I, we have side lobes here, so signal we're sending would also go through the side lobes. All the antennas are interacting. So in practical antennas, all antennas are having side lobes. There will be a lot of interaction. You cannot completely eradicate this inter-antenna interference. Another thing is that even if we don't have side lobes, which is not usually true, if we keep this antenna very closely, we want to have have more and more compact antenna, MIMO antenna array, we keep this antenna one, two, three very closely, then all the radiation pattern will start overlapping, antenna will have a lot of interaction. So this is a real scenario. This is over again. Even for the diversity again, I want to have diverse part. Let's say three by three MIMO system, I want to have nine independent parts. But then because of the side lobe and because of the close packed MIMO system, all the antennas will start interacting. So this is a real problem for MIMO wireless communication from antennas perspective. All antennas are interacting. So how do I overcome that? So now how do I minimize this inter-antenna interference from antenna interference perspectives? So basically there are two performance metrics here. One is the inter-element specimen. So if I have a smaller and smaller inter-element specimen, I can have smaller and smaller antenna volume, antenna size, and uh, when I do that, there will be a lot of interaction between the antenna of the MIMO and the transmitter and receiver. So that parameter which will actually decide how good is our MIMO antenna array system in terms of inter-antenna interference is the mutual coupling. So mutual coupling, if it is less than minus 15 dB, it's acceptable. So acceptable in the antenna community. So let us define what is inter-element spacing, IES. Let's say I have antenna one and antenna two, Center to center distance between this antenna one and antenna two is called the inter-element spacing. So now, usually traditional antenna array has distance between the antenna as lambda by two. So let's say, let's do a quick calculation. We use mobile phones every day. Mobile phone is working around one gears. At one gears, lambda by two is around 15 centimeter. So now we have a smartphone here. What is the uh, longest dimension of this antenna? Uh, this smartphone, mm -hmm. smartphone is around 15 centimeter. So we cannot fit actually two antennas here. Antenna will also occupy some size here, some size here, and even the distance is lambda by two. So if you consider the traditional antenna array, we cannot fit two antennas in a mobile phone. 
But here, the designs I'm going to show to you today actually allow us to have two antennas in a mobile phone because we have this inter element specific much lesser than lambda y2, much, much lesser than lambda y2. So when we closely pack MIMO antenna array, as I've already told you, antenna will start interacting. How do I minimize that? Some techniques also will be shown today. So traditional antennas, all antennas are passive device. It's a one port device. This is a microstrip antenna. We usually use in our lab for doing microstrip antenna measurements. And the port is where we connect the source to the antenna. So now most of the traditional antenna has one port, one element, but MIMO antenna is multi-port antenna, multi-element antenna. So for example, this is one antenna we have designed in our lab. This is f structure and element one, element two, then we have port one, port two. So these are two port, two element MIMO antenna array. And we also designed another one. This is annual link, ring slot MIMO antenna array. We have two elements here and there are two ports here. We also use neutralization lines to re remove the mutual coupling or reduce the mutual coupling. So now how do I measure this mutual coupling between two ports? It's, it's very simple. We have we always use BNA for making measurements at the micro frequency. BNA has two ports, port one and port two here. So we connect port one and port two of our antenna with the coaxial cable, and we send signal from port one and try to measure how much signal is received in port two. That will give me mutual coupling that is called S two one parameter in downstream matrix. This is another MIMO antenna, six port MIMO antenna, highly compact MIMO antenna we have designed in our lab. So this has six port and this also has six element. This is a uh, circular patch antenna and we also have neutralization line connecting between this antenna which will reduce the mutual coupling. So, but now we have BNA has six, uh, two ports and this antenna has six port. How do we make measurements mutual coupling? So what we do is we, let's say if I want to measure S16, then I just connect port one with the port one of the antenna antenna and port six with port two of the BNA. Then what happens to the other remaining ports? I cannot keep it open. If I keep it open, there will be a lot of reflections. I put mass slot here. Then I make the measurement, send the signal from port one, measure how much signal is received by the port six. Then I have S16. Similarly, you can measure S12 and so on. So this is the four antennas we have designed in our lab. MIMO antenna one, antenna two, and antenna three. This is two port, two port, this is six port. So what we observe is that inter-element spacing for this MIMO antenna one is 0 0.076 lambda h, and for the second one is 0 0.092 lambda h, and this is 0 0.076 lambda h. So it is uh, very close, uh, very uh, compact, very closely compact MIMO antenna array. So, and uh, we have also kept the mutual coupling within acceptable value, which is minus 15 dB. So these are our MIMO antenna, which is published in TENSIMF and uh, URSI General Assembly and uh, International Journal of RF and Computer and Edit Engineering. Okay, so another antenna we have also designed, this is dielectric block here. You have a cylindrical dielectric block here, cylindrical DRA here, DRA1, DRA2. And DRA actually is paired by this microstrip fit line with this annular, annular ring slots. So we have two antennas, so we need to fit it from port one and port two. and so you look at the ground plane here. Ground plane is partially at ground plane. You have a partially at ground plane. Usually ground plane is full. We have partially at it and we put some multi-grid lines. So these multi-grid lines actually behave as a single negative metameters. And because of this complicated structure we have in the ground plane, we have not employed any kind of mutual coupling reduction technique between these two dielectric resonators. And we have very good mutual coupling, acceptable below minus, 16, uh, minus 15 dB. Because of this arrangement we have here in the ground plane, multi-grid lines along with the parcelli edge ground plane. And we also have annular, outer annular ring and the inner annular ring slots. And with these two, we have observed that bandwidth has been improved. So this is a performance comparison of our work with the literature one, two, three, and four. I'll show you what are these references later, later on. So what you can observe is that our antenna is having the smallest volume, which is 0 0.0407. You can look at the other antennas, it is much more larger. And the uh, mutual coupling is acceptable below minus 15 dB. And inter-element spacing is 0 0.091, which is much lesser than what is reported in the literature. Uh, this is a paper we have uh, published in IMWCM. 
And uh, this is another one. This is four dialectic block, dialectic block one, two, three, and four. These are four elements, my more antenna array. So now here we have used cross vertical metallic plates here to uh, reduce the mutual coupling. This is a fit line. Fit line is uh, this is a fit line which is coupled through this aperture here. Usually people has rectangular aperture. We have met its square aperture to so that the coupling is better. And we have met a T shape here also to improve better coupling between the fit line and the dialectic block here. So the fit line is perpendicular. This is the same fit, fit lines are perpendicular similarly for the remaining two. Because of that, we'll have different modes excited for this dialectic block. So for the dialectic block one, the mode excited is dy one delta one mode. And since we have similar kind of fit line for dialectic block three, same mode is excited for ty one delta one mode. This is the fill pattern for the ty one delta one mode. Similarly, for the remaining two, dialectic block two and four, we have similar kind of fill patterns. This is actually tx delta one one mode. So since db2 and db4 are having same field excitation, there will be more interaction between these two antennas. So now looking at the radiation pattern here, you can see red color means there's a lot of fields radiating. Yellow color means less field radiating. This is without the vertical metric plates. You can see this antenna and this antenna, antenna one and antenna four are having same mode excitation. So there'll be a lot of interaction, close interaction. Here also, these two antennas are having some more excitation, so there will be a lot of coarse interaction. So now, what, after we put the vertical metallic plates, then what we observe is this portion here, this portion here, this portion here, it has become yellow, so the fill has been reduced. The fill interaction has been minimized significantly. So this is the scattering parameter plot of this uh, DRA MIMO antenna array. Bandwidth is from 5.45 to 6.5 years, minus 10 dB bandwidth. It can actually cover the 5.8 years wireless LAN application. And one more thing is that, even if we have placed this antenna very close by 0 0.08 lambda, the mutual coupling is below minus 20 dB. So this is a performance uh, comparison we have here. Bandwidth is almost comparable with the reported papers in the literature. Number of port is ours is four, except this six, this is three ports. Looking at the antenna volume, antenna size, and the mutual coupling. Mutual coupling is minus 20 dB, which is very good. And antenna volume, you can see our antenna is having the smallest antenna volume, 0 0.039 lambda. And inter-element spacing is around 0 0.08 lambda. So I can, uh, so let me summarize what we have discussed today. First, I have introduced you to the wireless MIMO wireless communication, I have defined what is rate or multiplexing gain and diversity gain. And we have observed that there is a trade-off between this diversity and multiplexing gain. We have to design MIMO system based on this trade-off. And we have defined what is inter-antenna interference from wireless perspective. This is basically a mixture of symbols we are receiving at the receiver. And the receiver has to do a lot of computation to find out which symbols has been transmitted from the transmitter. But we have seen there's a solution for that. If you use a special modulation-based MIMO system, there's no inter-antenna interference. Another thing is that we have looked at the inter-antenna interference from antenna perspective. And the parameter we have considered is mutual coupling. And we have used some techniques to actually reduce mutual coupling, even if we have very small size MIMO antenna arrays with inter-element specifying less than 0 0.092 lambda, which is much lesser than traditional antenna, which is 0 0.5 lambda our antennas was able to give us mutual coupling with acceptable value less than minus 15 dB. These are the references. And uh, this is what I want to give take home messages. Basically, antenna engineers and wireless engineers should work hand in hand. So many a times, wireless engineers doesn't know what antenna engineers can do. So they assume that antenna engineers will do wonders. They will do everything, but there's some limitations here also. And another thing is that many times antenna engineers design without any specific application in mind. They just design the antenna and they go the results. They're measuring, they go the results. So that should not be the way. Actually, they should design it for one particular application, which is actually required by wireless engineers. So I want to conclude with this. Antenna and wireless engineers should work hand in hand so that we can have a better solution for the wireless communication systems. Thank you very much.